Hello! So today is going to be a whip parade and I have quite a few crochet projects and just as many sewing projects so I'm just going to combine all the crochet in the beginning and all the sewing at the end. I know it's a little bit of a different angle and that's one of my whips back there so I'll share with you. Okay so this is going to be really great for getting your whips and have a plan of action. So I'm going to get it done. I'm going to start with the oldest whip that I have, and it is a mosaic crochet blanket. So it's my lovely bag here. And this is a pattern by Tina, the little, the mosaic queen. I love her videos. I love her intros. I'll link her down below. And I don't remember what this one is called. It is almost done. It is almost done, but I think what I'm going to do is this is actually quite heavy, very heavy. So I wasn't able to work on it during the summer. And this is using cotton cakes from Hobby Lobby. Turns out it's a very heavy blanket. So I don't work on it in the summer and I kept putting it off. One thing that's going to make this very easy to tackle is this highlighter tape. If you don't have this for your projects, uh, especially for mosaics, so that you could just lift it and place it where you need it, rather than trying to color it or buy some fancy little doodad book that you put magnets on, if it gets shoved off, it gets shoved off and then you're like, okay, where am I again? So. I find this to be very tedious where I shade it and then I fold it. Whereas this, I can just lie the tape there. I can see through the tape. This is life changing for mosaic as well as any pattern that you're working on. You could just highlight it and it's perfect. And you can even put it on top of your plastic to keep your paper safe and then put a straight line where you are. So. I really love this stuff. If you don't have it, I'll link it down below, but this is my oldest whip. So I am definitely going to work on this and I will tell you my plan of action as soon as I get through all my crochet projects. It is such a cool blanket. I think it's called Casablanca, but I'm not sure. Okay, next on the list is a Pika Pow pattern from the Amigurumi book. I was going to make this cat originally, but I ended up making a completely different cat because I was like, I'm going to try and tackle this from the legs up. So I tried to do some backwards math, but it turns out I didn't want to do the math because then you had to change the colors. You had to work everything backwards where it says to increase, you decrease. So I was like, you know what? This is turning out to be too much. So then I decided to work the way the pattern suggested, which is the top down. But I didn't like um, my white yarn was just a slightly thinner weight than the color of the body. And I felt like it was just pulling in too tight. And so I opted to, you know what, go with the other pattern. <laughs> So that came from Pika Pow too. I'm not sure if I'm going to work on this or not because it takes a lot of brain power to go. I don't know. So now I have part of the pattern worked from the top down and part of the prop pattern worked from the bottom up. I'm wondering if I could just meet halfway. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, the majority of the work is done. So unfortunately, this is either... This is going to be a frog it or finish it. The mosaic blanket, definitely finish. This Pika Pow cat, I'm not sure if it's a finish because I already made another cat to satisfy that one. But since it's almost done, I may finish it. it it's a may. May. <laughs> I'm going to put that one on the floor as a maybe. So this next one comes from a lovely bag from England from Pamela at um, 
Ginger Cat Crochet. Thank you. And in here, I have the cutest little squares. And I was going to make something with these, and it just get, kept getting put off. And so I have a ton of these little squares in here. And so this is going to be a finish it because I like it so much. And this is using like paint box and Shepshiz Katona cotton. So I'm using those types of yarns. They're a much thinner weight and I'm going to make a project with it. I just, yeah, so this is going to be a finish. Okay. Here I have a little flamingo bag. Let's see what's in here. Oh, okay, this is my scrap blanket. My scrap blanket is gonna consist of all these little granny squares put together. And so in here, I have a ton of little granny squares using my four weight yarn to help use up my scrap stash. I can't make enough amigurumi to go through my scrap stash. There's just no way. So I'm putting it in a scrap busting blanket. And this is gonna be a finish it. It's just gonna take me like all year. There's no rush on this. This is like, okay, I don't wanna think about anything. I'm gonna make a few squares. Granny squares are the thing to make for my comfort, for my joy, and for my relaxation. And I do not mind weaving in ends. I actually find it very therapeutic because I'll watch a video and I'll just grab my needle and I'm, it's a slow stitch for me. It's like slow stitching. So I can put on a movie and get through an entire blanket of tons of ends. I've done it before. I really enjoyed it. And I think it's just like a time frame, a frame of mind. You see all those ends and you're like, oh, I just don't want to do it. Well, you just grab yourself a drink, grab your needle and put on a movie, a comfort movie, like something you always watch. A few of those for me are Valley Girl, <laughs> Streets of Fire. I already know the movie. I just like, I just like it. So I'll put something like that on and go to town on my ends. It's very therapeutic. So this is gonna be a finish someday. So this next one is a blanket. It is the Sunflower Squish. Such a cute little square design that you attach. And I love these little scalloped edges. This is a crochet along right now. And I'm not exactly going along with the crochet along. I was a test for the pattern. I tested the pattern and so I, I, I made up a few, but I loved it so much that I wanted to do an entire blanket of it. And I really loved the yellow centers with the white flower and the gray background, but I don't have enough of this yarn. So I was going to use this as my white yarn. So I went and picked this up at Hobby Lobby. It's going to be Sweet Delight. It's the baby yarn and it has a little bit of a shine to it, like a little sparkle stripe throughout. And I'm hoping that this will go lovely together as well. So yeah, this sunflower squish um, is by, I'll have all these patterns linked down below, but it is a free tutorial and a free pattern on her blog, I think. Or you could just get the download and buy it. It's gonna be a finish it. I just, I just don't know when. <laughs> but that will go with my plan. I have a plan, so I think I'll be able to work, work these out. Okay, the next one is from this bag by Classy Handmade, uh, Shondell, if you don't know her, I'll link her down below. She painted, hand painted this and did this little amigurumi. Oh, okay, so this is a dog that I am making, an amigurumi dog from the little Disney series called Kit Bull. And I got stuck on one of the legs. Like I understood it for the first time. I obviously made a lovely shapely dog leg. Look at that, the design on that. It's gonna be so cool, but I just couldn't, un I, when I went back to the pattern, cause I had put it down, 
don't do that. Don't do that. (laughs) I had put it down and I'm like, okay, I'm going to work on this leg and six months later. And now I can't understand the pattern like I did the first time. So I just know I have to come in it with a clear mind, no YouTube on, nothing on, just pay attention and just get through it because that I'm, I'm only stuck on the leg, like the body and the head is almost done. The head, the body's done. So I'm keeping that in here. <laughs> it's a very good, quick, short film called Kit Bull. I loved it, especially if you're an animal lover, dog and cats, especially. Okay, so this big bag, let's see what's in here. Oh, okay, okay. So this one is the hexagon thing that I'm doing. I am going to make this beautiful design of a hexagon blanket. And I've never done hexagons. I always I always do squares because I know them. And I want hexagons to be another like go-to. There are so many things you can do with hexagons. First, I don't like my blue. And so that's what's preventing me from stopping it. But I do like this crinkle blue. But I don't have very much of it. And I think this is the color I need the most of. Because the green grass and the tree... There's not a lot of color there or the white for the sky. I mean, the clouds. Um, so here's the green. I do like this green. And see, here's the blue. I really like the blue. And then I'm thinking of adding a mix. When I, when I showed this blanket initially, I'll link it down below of my whole plan of this blanket. But it is... This will be the tree. So it's like a flower, but it's going to be a tree. It's so cool. So yes, I want to work on this. I want to finish this by the end of the year. Um, like I said, the blue is what's stopping me. I don't have a blue I like. So, but all the yarn is ready. And I, I do have a plan of action. <laughs> Okay, let's see what's in this little bag. This is an Amazon bag. I'll link it down below. It's pretty cool because you can go to the park and then you can also feed your yarn through here. I don't particularly like these because then you have to clip your yarn to do something. So it's like it has to stay in here. I'm not I'm not one like that. I don't, don't want to be clipping it. So this isn't a project that I'm exactly working on. This is a a project with no plan. This is a solid sunburst square. And I like I said, I've been trying to get in my get rid of my simply soft yarn forever. And so I just thought, you know what? Instead of changing colors, I'm just gonna make solid sunbursts and I'm gonna make some blanket putting them all together. Well, when I did that, the colors didn't exactly mingle together like I wanted them to. I had envisioned them, so these two were the colors that stuck together the best. And I'm like, maybe I can make a bag out of it. What can I do with this? I have, I have four of the blue and four of the pink. So I'm not sure what to do with this whether to just to unravel them so this is like mm, I think it's an I think it's a frog it I think it's a frog it because I don't think I'm gonna make a bag this I am currently working on it's in the bunny bag Ooh, this one's from Cassandra um I am making the chubby bunnies oh I love this pattern look at the yo so cute you just imagine a little face. I love this pattern. Uh, it's so easy and everything is sewn. Um, the way the pattern is designed, the legs get crocheted in and the arms get crocheted in. So you're just kind of like working your way up. You do the limbs and work your way up. Such a good pattern designer. And all I need to do is add its face and send this off. This was a commission piece. I had originally tried to do it in Dollar Tree yarn, but I didn't like it and it was quite spacey. So I, this is more of a velvet feel and the velvet tends to leave more spaces if you don't go 
low enough on your hook. So I didn't finish this one because I didn't like it. And I gave this one the long ears, which I thought will be cute. So this is a chubby bunny pattern. I'll link it down below. So this one I am going to finish. Like, it's going to be at the top of the list. And it's perfect for a bunny bag. So since I make a lot of bunnies, I made the bunny, I put it in the bunny bag. And this little gem, I'll just leave it here, is my mix and match. Oh, I raved about this and I've obsessed about this book. I, this was a pretty big comfort piece for me because it's, it's doing the same stitch over and over and you get to mix colors and play with colors. Well, <laughs> I kept running out of yarn and so I just will put it down. So this is Simply Soft. So those are those solid sunburst granny squares. And so I wanted to incorporate, since I had a lot of blue, I made this one panel and I'm going to incorporate it with my mix and match. Here is, I just finished this panel last night because I had run out of this green yarn and I needed to go buy more. And I finally was able to do that over the week. And so last night I took some time and I finished it. See right here, I added on my green. I just needed a little more to go and I had to buy another Simply Soft yarn. <laughs> so these two look good together. And then I wanted to do this black and white, but it's not going very well with it. I don't know if it's because it's too dark. I just, it's, it's not going together well. And so that turned me off and I was like, you know what? I have other things to make. <laughs> and so I just put this off to the side. Well, I tried to add a different color. This one right here. And I thought, okay, let me just try and add some neutrals. And I've never done cables. So I did this lovely cable pattern in there. So easy. And this was going better for me. But see, they use some neutrals. The, these are neutrals, but I was going for this and I thought my green and my blue were bright enough. But even though I don't think these are stark white, I think they are neutrals, not stark white. And I used a very stark white. So what happened here is I ran out of yarn again. And so I can't get this one again. So I'm like, oh. So I pulled out this color. I am making this for my um, charity project. So my local church wants blankets, hats, scarves, all kinds of stuff and like lap covers for people who have wheelchairs. But they have to be a certain size so they don't get caught in the wheels or in things. So I went with this stitch. And pink and green always go good together. So I went with that. That's going well and I have plenty of this yarn. Someone requested a video of how I'm attaching these panels together. But the way that I'm attaching these panels together is also the way that I'm attaching my squares together in my other blankets. So I'm not sure when I'll be able to do that. But if I... If I put a row together, I will definitely record that and attach it to one of my videos, but not yet. I'm not ready to do a row yet. So this will be a finish it, but it's low on the list. Okay. And then, and, oh, this is my sewing. Okay. So, so far I only have one frog it. And these are all whips that need to get on the hook. And so one of them is a panda bear. My sister wants a panda bear for a birthday girl. My, I want to do a review on this book. And I also have, yeah, 
Just those two whips. I think that's all. Because the other one commission was the bunnies. So, okay, so you, uh, I did a review on this book in my last video, but see, you take this one pattern and it has all these different outfits and a few different hairstyles. So it's the same pattern, but with a, a collage of different things you can do to it. I want to make this girl right here. And I really love the color of her hair but I don't think I can find that color in my stash. Skin tones I'm going with. I'm like, should I make her very light or should I give her a tan? I'm not sure. These are skin tone colors I'm thinking about. This is for the panda bear, so I gotta get it ready. I gotta do that one. I had these two lovely pastel -y colors. I just don't know which portion and I did want to make her jean color in her pants, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I do have it in my kind of signature color. <laughs> so I'm initially thinking of these, but then I still need a beautiful hair color. So I'm wondering if I should just go with brown. Also, Stitchity Doodle and I did a little yarn swap. She took a lot of my huge yarns, my parfait chunky type yarns, and she gave me this bundle of ice yarns, which I have never tried. And I was trying to incorporate this, so I was thinking maybe this purple or this pink. I don't know. So yeah, I'm having trouble deciding with the colors that I do have without trying to go get more yarn. <laughs> So, you know, there's a little bit of a glare. I'm not sure. What do you think? <laughs> this for her jeans, this for her top in her pockets. I don't know. So I want to make her so I could do a review on this. I'm really dying to get my hooks in this. So this is to be hooked and this must be done. So this is on the whip pile. I think I've done pretty good at my whips. Like I thought there was going to be a ton more, but let's see. I have 10. I have 10 ongoing whips and one frog. So pretty good. So I'm going to set these off. Okay. So as for the sewing whips, that one on the back wall, I know it's kind of fuzzy. Let me fix it. Okay. So here is my first ever quilt. I did at the very beginning when I first started sewing decide to make some quilt squares but it was way above my league. It was very scrappy and I wasn't helped very well. So I just and I hated the colors. I hated the colors. <laughs> I saw I had no joy working on that. So then I was I wasn't really into quilting because I'm like this yucky. I don't like it. So I really liked making bags and clothes. So anyway, this one popped up at my local sewing shop and it is a pattern. I'll have it linked down below. Annalise. And this is a free pattern from what I believe. At least that's what I was told. And I will, if I find it, I'll link it down below. But the teacher added this applique portion, which I have never done before. And I wanted to try some applique. So for the applique, this is so cool. I, I have been working. I love this. These are, these are all the colors that just bring me joy in the pattern and everything. I needed to pick a lot of fabric to do this pattern. And so I picked all this fabric, and this is all This is all Minky Kim fabric. This one has like a strawberry patch and flowers. This one has some lovely pink background with flowers and this is the same one in peach and the same fabric in gray. And then this lovely bouquet of little tossed flowers. So when I had originally did this, I was in the class and I could not see the big picture. I had all this stack of fabric, but I didn't know what was going where. I had a hard time because I had bought it like a week or two in advance. And I thought the teacher was just going to help us through it. <laughs> But 
but she was actually picking fabric for her own quilt and quilting with us, which I really liked, but then I couldn't figure out what things went where. So <laughs> they had two design boards at the class and the two people, the teacher and someone else was using the design board to display their stuff to get the big picture and see it. Well, I didn't have that, but she gave us an idea to get an old tablecloth or just any tablecloth, flip it around, and then you have your design wall. And I was like, oh, perfect. So I did that. And originally my hearts were not this color, my big hearts, but this was my plan. What I saw was I had all my fabric and I was like, these are so pretty. I'm going to make the three hearts out of these colors because they're all matching and they're just different shades. But then I made it and I'm like, it doesn't go right. I don't like it. Why doesn't it go right? Now it won't stick because it won't stick fabric on fabric, but this is sewn on in one piece, so I can't take it off. But I just kept looking at it and I'm like, it doesn't go right. It's not right. This isn't what I had envisioned. I know this isn't what I picked, but it wasn't until I got home and I displayed it up that I found out what I did wrong. I was supposed to make my hearts out of the same background that I made the bunnies. And so I ripped it all out and I put the new, I made the new hearts and attached it. I love this quilt. It would work well from Valentine's all the way through Easter because of the bunnies. And I love having this wall to display it. And the fact that if I go to a class, I'm going to bring this and then that way I can get the big picture like everybody else, no matter where I go. <laughs> so I really like it for quilting uh, that. And I really love this quilt as my first quilt. Okay. Look at this pattern down below if I can find it because I was told it was free. If you're new here, um, I made this bag. It's called a Poolside Tote by Noodlehead and it's holding a, one of the projects that I'm making from here called the Pleated Purse. I am using very new to me fabric. I, I've never worked with leather or pleather <laughs> and this one is embossed leather and I really wanted it to be like an actual purse, not made out of cotton, but made out of something that purses are made out of. And this is the lovely inside fabric. Love this. Learning a lot with this one. I did my first inset zipper pocket. So that was cool. So this was very new to me. I've never done this before. But that is a project that I'm working on. And this is a whip that will get done this month. Sorry, in the month of March. <laughs> I am taking this, this as a class with my local sewing shop. And when we took this class, I took it with my daughter in love and she brought in this fabric to make her bag with. Can you believe it? I was like, where did you find that? And so she said she found it at Hobby Lobby, but she bought way too much of it. Now this isn't a cotton, um, a quilting cotton. It is like canvas fabric. So it would make a great, great type of sturdy bag. So she gave it to me and she said, just make me some zipper bags to go with my purse. And so this is a whip that I need to get to that I have not started, but it's on the, I have to whip. I need to get it on the whip. I need to make it a work in progress. So this is gonna happen. And then um, 
I'm not going to show you all my whips and sewing. I'm only going to show you the ones that I'm currently working on. The ones that have been set to the side that are to be done later, I will showcase as I finish them. This is a new spot for me if you're new here. I've just moved into this room about a month ago or a month or two ago. And I have been really trying to find the right setup. It's really hard. <laughs> you have to move in and kind of like, okay, what's going to fit where? Then you have to make it fit to be functional because if it's not functional, then what's the purpose? So I found a functional space. So I know you can't really see, but here's my cutting table my cotton table and then right here is my sewing machine and then right here is my ironing space so I'm like whoop, doop, doop, I got it and since the sewing space has been set up so perfectly we got the trio the power of three going on I've been like ooh, I want to sew and I haven't picked up my crochet as much as I've picked up sewing this past week I have been quilting up a storm and since I've been playing so much uh, this is a Lori Holt fabric it's a panel that's already like lined so there's a little dash line right here that so you cut on the dash line and then you just sew all the directions are actually on the canvas I made a few of these before and so now I'm finishing them because this has been set up that I I can just like come and sit and I have my projects ready and I'm ready to sew. Uh, so I played around and I put love sewing, practicing with my um, stitches in here. And then I had had a glass of wine. The, the house was empty. I didn't have to think about food or dinner or cleaning or showering. <laughs> And I had had a glass of wine and I was using these little squares to try and quilt on. You probably can't see it, but I'm way off. <laughs> this one, I was way off on this one. But so all I did was quilt the little squares. And so that's all you see on the back is the squares. So I really liked this. This is going to be the back panel. That's the lining. Ta-da! Now I followed the Lori Holt tutorial. She, like she gives an in-depth tutorial on how to make these bags and I'm just like following along and I'm having fun and I'm quilting. But one thing she doesn't have are these D rings. And if you make little projects or you have embroidery or little simple sewing or slow stitching, I mean, this is a nice size bag for notions as well, but I wanted a D ring because I thought these would look cool hanging on a wall as my whip projects or just to have to put your stitch markers on or um, hook on a notions bag if you have a hook on it or your keys, I don't know. I like it with a D-ring because it's easier to hang and you can also put them on a spiral, like a three ring, no. What are those large rings, like a ring? You can put all your projects on a ring and then they're all in one place. You just flip through, it's really cool. So I wanted the D-rings. I'll have those linked down below. I always, I also use these for my crochet bags. So this is one, and then again, I'm playing with stitches here, using lots of fancy stitches, and on the back you can see, but basically I did leaves in between the flowers. So very st simple, just straight lines, but I'm having a lot of fun. So that's the back panel, this is the front panel, and then here I have another D-ring that I'm going to add to it. But having this like sewing trio command center here has been such a huge game changer in my sewing that I don't, I'm, I put down my hooks and I started 
sewing so much and just ha and then working on that is just bringing me so much joy and then when I'm sitting right here in my little um crochet corner over there this is my crochet spot I'm looking at that beautiful beautiful scene I could just see my beautiful beautiful hearts and rabbits okay now this one I'm very excited about this is fall, definitely, has a crow, pumpkin, and sunflowers, and this is what I'm proud of. So this is on my machine, and it's called an one of the applique stitches, and it just came out so nice. I really love that added detail, simple quilting of like appliqueing this on, and then this is the lining fabric I chose. I did do some fancy stitches up here, but it's a very light color, so you can't see it. And this is the back panel. Nothing fancy, but this one I tried something different and I went in diagonal lines. I am just having so much fun sewing. And so this is the D-ring that I've attached to the crow. So these are the three zippy bags that I'm working on and I'm going to try and make this zippy bag the same as those with the little, not at the top, but in the top half. I like the location of this one, but I also like having box bottom bags. Okay, so those are my immediate sewing projects. I, I do have a stack of sewing whips down here. Of course, the ideas just keep coming. You know, like I want to redesign some jeans and I want to uh, make a sewing notions. I made this bag and this is turning out to be the perfect little toolbox, which is what it was, a toolbox bag. And I used some ribbons, um, but this has worked out so nicely. Take along on my sewing classes. I was originally using this, which is my mother's old train case. She used it as a sewing box. And, but what happened was, is I would take it to class and when I would take stuff out, the top would be heavier than what was in the bottom. And so it, it would tip sometimes, once in a while, but I kind of knew how to, how to work it. But the other thing is I would have to look in my, my box here to try and find the tools I needed. Whereas this, everything is kind of standing up. Like here's my blades, here's my scissors, here's my threads. Everything is nicely standing up so I can easily get to it. I've taken out a lot of my tools. Um, so they're right here in front of me, like my race, my roller blades. <laughs> but anytime I want to go, I just grab this bag and I'm ready. So it is working out so cool for my sewing box on the go. But I actually have a plan for this and it's coming up soon. It's really exciting. So I'm excited. I want to do this too, but it's, I don't think it's, it, it's not going to be a sewing project, but mainly a DIY project. There is one more idea that I want to show you. So I have this old sweatshirt. It's just a white sweatshirt. It has that little pocket right here. And that was my first time doing applique stitches. Sorry, that was my first time ever trying applique on something. I got really excited with the bunnies, of course, because I like my bunnies. And I have that bunny. And I was like, that would look really cute on a sweater. And so that is what I picked this up for. Out of the closet, it's my old sweater. And I thought that little bunny right here with his little ears would look great in a minky gray, like a soft gray. This is minky. And I thought, oh, I could put a gray bunny on my white sweater. But I've, I've outgrown this a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it most likely will be for my daughter and not me. But that is something that I really, really want to do as well. <sighs> so I'm learning. I'm enjoying learning. And it's been a lot of fun. Thank you for hanging out with me. Turns out I have a lot of whips, but not as many as I thought. A lot of them are blanket. And I'm only frogging one. Oh, oh, so my plan of action. So this is how I am going to attack my whips. And you can probably use this strategy too, is to line up the whips, line them up, put them against a wall, and then you grab the first one. And then when I, it's cause I crochet every evening after dinner, shower, I got my jammies on, it's crochet time. And that's, that's it. That's, it's my time. <laughs> So I sit in my little crochet corner over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one bag and I'm going to work on that for that night. Then it'll go at the end of the line and then I'll pick up the next project and then I'll work on that for that night. And I, that's how I'm going to, it's like every, a little bit for you, a little bit every day. So by the end of the week, so I have about I think it was 11 projects in crochet. Yeah, I have 11 projects in crochet and the ones that are commissioned are what I'm going to work on first in the mosaic blanket. I'm gonna throw that one in there because that is my, that's like two years in the making. I, have, I put it down and I just haven't picked it up. So I'm gonna work on the commission, which is the panda bear, the bunnies. <gasps> Oh, I have one more commission. I knew I had 12. I need to make a couple, a doll couple. I've been requested to make a couple to represent the couple. <laughs> okay, so I forgot one whip. So I have 12. So I have to work on the couple, the bunny, the panda, and the mosaic. And those all need to be done in March. Oh! And I have my hooking up with books. I'm gonna have to go write all this stuff down. <laughs> so yeah, I have the, I have my 11 projects plus an, a couple plus my hooking up with books all due in March. So I think the only thing that I'm gonna be working on sewing wise is that bunny blanket and that my pleated purse as part of the, okay, I'm not going to crochet today. I'm going to sew. That's going to be that. Yeah. So that is going to be my plan of action. I'm going to work on one every day, just that one and get as much as I can done, then put it back at the end of the line and take the next one into the line. And that's how I'm going to go about it. Hope it works. <laughs> okay. And then if you have not heard about hooking up with books, Cassandra and I host a book club called Hooking Up With Books, and we received so many projects already. And let me tell you, they are all so unique. I, I am blown away by this projects. I am completely blown away by all the things that the different, so different. There are so different. I, I can't believe it. But anyway, a lot of people have contributed. So if you have not um, submitted your project, email us, uh, Cassandra or I, your project, and we'll be showcasing that on March 15th for the book. And then there was none. And if you're a fast crocheter and this is the first time you've heard about it, I'll link the video down below be because you don't even necessarily have to read the book. You could watch the videos. There are three videos. I think they're an hour long and it's a whodunit mystery, murder mystery. I yet, I don't have a project picked yet. I don't have an idea, but I am blown away by all the people and their project ideas. And you, and if, so you won't want to miss the big reveal. It, it's going to be packed with so many different projects. Okay, so that is all. I will have all those videos and links I have down below. And you don't want to miss this highlighter tape. The best thing to keep track of yourself in any crochet project, especially mosaic. Awesome. 
Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye.